Hi, I'm Joanne Ransom. I'm the Head of Libraries at Horifanor Library Trust here in Levin, New Zealand. We've been involved in two open source projects, COHA, which is a library management system, and that was developed back in 2000, and also KETI, which is a digital archive, um, which we developed oh, three or four years ago now. We wanted that local content to sit alongside um, digital collections from throughout New Zealand, so it didn't actually matter who owned it or where it lived. We wanted it all available in one search result. So how did your local population respond to the opportunity? It was a bit amazing, really. We, um, I stuck an ad in the newspaper, um, interesting work but lousy pay, and called for people to come and help. And the first meeting I had 24 people come and say, yes, we'll help you. Um, lots of retired you know, doctors, nurses or doctors, secretaries, lawyers, secretaries that can that can read scrawly handwriting and, and decipher what um, these old minute books were saying. And, and I think there was a real sense of, you know, we asked if people would help us and they said, sure. It's, it's like the old barn raising days, I guess, or, you know, laying a concrete driveway, you know, all the neighbours pitched in to help. And there was certainly that feeling here that what we were doing was pretty unique. And, and we we just had so much help. We ran working bees uh, one night a week at the library. I said, look, just for eight weeks, I really want to get some seed content up. Can I, would people help us? And after nine months, I had to call a halt to them because it was killing us. You know, because <laughs> there was so much, so much being done. It was really great. So um, people, people really like Kitty. They really like looking at it and finding stuff. But also, if they don't find what they're looking for, they'll think, oh, you know, I've got some of that, or I, can, I know where that is, or I can find that, and they'll also fill in the gaps. I thought it would be predominantly historical material, mm -hmm. but our local arts community have completely embraced it, and we get artists loading up their, their work and showing it, um, quilters, embroiderers, you know, loading up photographs of their, of their magnificent works, because they can show their family all around the world what they're doing, and quilters share, and they love looking at other people's quilts, so that's that's been a real highlight in Kitty, which I didn't foresee. <laughs> And of course, you know, people would load up these large photographs of their quilts and you can zoom in and you can see the, the detail of it. So that, that's been a surprise, really. Um, and there's been some, some really nice supportive community stuff happening around the photos where people supported each other. Um, there, was, there was one young 17-year-old who was an artist who loaded up his portfolio of paintings where he basically um, came out in terms of being a young gay man in Horofnoa. And it was just really heartwarming to see the support that he got from people he didn't know he would never normally run into, kind of, you know, giving him these really lovely positive affirmations in this forum. So there's been some, some really lovely little surprise things happening like that. <laughs> yeah, there are these moments that, that, that just make this digital content come alive. There was... Uh, a Samoan woman that came into the library once and she was escorted with her two daughters and they were they were cuddling her, you know, one under each arm, basically half dragging, half carrying this, this woman in and saying, it's all right, mum, we're allowed in here, you know, yes, it's free, yep, yep, we're allowed to be here and they kind of parked her up in front of a, a computer and um, and pulled up a Facebook and there were these these glorious photographs of a family celebration back in the islands and of course you know this woman's being cuddled by her family and these tears rolling down her face as she's looking at this 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 content so yeah there are moments like that which just that, that fill you up that keep you going yeah oh, and there's that old guy charlie there was who turned up what at the library one night and said um i've come to help i said okay we're just about to close he said then i've come to give you a hand Okay, with Kita, yes, yes, I thought I should. So there's this, you know, this, you're doing something local, I should come and help. It turns out he didn't know anything about computers, he didn't know what a mouse was, he didn't know how any of this stuff worked. And by the end of the night, we had got him, he was sitting in front of a computer terminal, typing in descriptions of vintage farm machinery photographs, which we had we just happened to have taken at a, at a Fair, a few weeks earlier, and I'd loaded them into Kitty as you know, white tractor, orange tractor, you know, red <laughs> tractor. <laughs> and he was appalled by it because he was a member of that club and he knew exactly what all of these different pieces of machinery were, and what they did, and what the tests were, and why they did different tests. and And it was just wonderful. So he was, you know, sometimes the heavens just provide what you need. And, and he walked in, and I had the stuff that got him hooked. I think that's a really important role for public libraries is that we do look after the local content. And we build these really deep, very really deep, strong silos of local content. And as if we each do that, yes. and then with, with things like Kitty, we can harvest all the results into one search engine. So if we each look after our own, 
um, then we all benefit. Have you seen Digital New Zealand, the, the work that's going on there? Because that's exactly what this is about. Yeah. They've got 34 kitties in different communities, and then Digi Digital New Zealand just kind of has done the pipes, really, which makes it so that you can do a search, and when you get results, you're getting results from all 34 kitty, plus about 60 other digital repositories, you know, government departments and councils and DOC and Te Papa and museums, and so all of that content, it doesn't matter where it lives, Yep. is all being harvested and, and produced in one list as a search result, which is, you know, that, that's the kind of the magic that, yes. that makes Kitty sing. Yeah. Yeah. But, but without you doing that individual local stuff, there would be none of the, the stuff that's above. That's right. Yeah. 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 And so I'm just thinking worldwide now. What advice would you offer to public libraries who are unsure about whether they should be digital content creators or not? I'm shocked at the question, to be honest. I think it's just such a no-brainer. I think as public libraries, this is this is our game. We're about information. And whether it's on paper or whether it's digital, it's all information. And historically, librarians have always captured knowledge and, and recorded knowledge and made knowledge available. And I, I just think it's, it's our obligation, you know, as public librarians to look after our stuff, our local content. And, and they're just tools. Digital is just another tool, another way of creating content. Oh. It's, it's just, we've got to survive. You know, yeah. we, we've got to roll. We've got to work out our role going forward. And we've got, as public libraries, we've got to figure out where we're going to fit in into our society and into our communities and what we, we, how we're going to add value. And I, I really absolutely believe that we have a role to play in our communities and our society and the, the advent of digital is not going to see that diminish. Um, and we've just got to, you know, we reinvent ourselves and just keep moving forward.